you know, there's no reason we're playing Isaac. We're just playing Isaac. It's just fun. Isn't that what gaming's supposed to be about before the battle pass? Will NL win this one? Before the DLC and the horse armor and the battle pass, wasn't it just supposed to be about fun? What happened, man? Hey, by the way, I don't like to start with the politics bit. Just kidding. Please tell me, please tell me you saw the interview with Ted Cruz where he says he's a gamer and then talks about how much he loves playing mobile games, putting $20 in so he can feel powerful. And then uh, he assumes that that's going to make him the friend of the gamers when actually it's like the exact antithesis of, of what quote unquote core gamers are into. It's shameful. Do I'm see you could go look at it's not a deep fake, I swear to god. I'm okay. I'm Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this shit? I'm incredible, dude. No, okay, I'm still fine. Whatever. That's still great. Holy cow, that was some good walking. That's not really what he said. I mean, this is a paraphrase, but I, I I genuinely promise you this is a good faith paraphrase. He said, you know, I'm a gamer. I like to play these mobile games, and I'm not going to lie. Sometimes, you know, I they allow you to purchase, like, stronger items and stuff like that. So sometimes, you know, I'll throw in 20 bucks to get a treasure chest or something like that so I can feel powerful. You can go look up the interview for yourself. That's basically exactly what he said. I, I, I might have even put some positive sauce on it. That's a good paraphrase. Thank you. I just couldn't believe that, you know, he's probably our best shot at a first gamer president. I didn't realize that he's a, a, a mobile game whale. Joe Biden is not a, a gamer president. Joe Biden, the I mean, I feel like he played like... He was around when pinball was invented, maybe? I don't know, when when was pinball invented? It's like the 1950s, maybe? Seems about right. Come on, man. He was old when Tetris came out? I mean, that's what I've been saying, and, and not even in a negative way. It is kind of crazy to think, like, like, I'm a little old. Like, I'm old enough that, that movies from my youth are kind of like old movies. I'm not of the opinion, like, oh, Jurassic Park is modern. I understand Jurassic Park is like, it's a classic movie now. People probably look at it the same way like I look at Back to the Future or something like that. But you can really get, like, old as shit if you live for a long time. I know it's a self, it's a self-fulfilling statement, I suppose, but, like... Can you imagine being so old that, like, Jurassic Park, the movie you liked when you were a child, turns 70 or something like that? I mean, that's crazy. Can you imagine being alive for the 70th year, 70th anniversary re-release? I didn't even take uh, Tech 2 that's, or, or Robo Baby 2. That's how much I disrespect it. I did, I was, I was just browsing some trending topics last night. Uh, I, I haven't seen the J Jurassic World movies, except I did see Jurassic uh, World. I saw the first half of it. I saw up till the point where the kids are inside of the, the dinosaur ball. And then Jimmy Fallon is giving them the safety uh, presentation. And then like, a, I don't know, a gigantosaurus or something like that. Uh, knocks the ball over and then things things go wrong. But I was laughing because like the, Chris Pratt was a trending topic. So many tweets were like, how did we end up getting a trilogy of Jurassic World movies where Chris Pratt's only uh, technique to stop dinosaurs is going like this. He just... And every time he sees uh, it's a T-Rex, hey, hold on a second. He sees a gigantosaurus. Whoa, hold on there. It's crazy. Let's be cool. Also, I I read that r slash movies post about Jurassic World. Uh, the new one, I forget what it's called. Dominion or something. 
where it said, I, and these are spoilers, so I apologize, but I don't apologize because it has like a 38 on Rotten Tomatoes right now. But I, I didn't realize at the end of the second Jurassic World, um, dinosaurs and uh, they escaped from whatever like black market auction they were going to be at and then they just start coexisting with man and the uh well my, my devil deal the uh new movie apparently starts with the the moral that humans and dinosaurs are gonna have to learn to coexist which is one of the most funny statements i think i've ever heard in my life how on earth are is human society gonna coexist with bloodthirsty predatorial lizards like pterodactyls flying around uh downtown manhattan new york city like what are we <laughs> what are we gonna do man like, we're gonna like bump into a velociraptor when i'm trying to get on the subway and be like oh sorry sir sorry that's the beauty of modern society, man. Just like, I'm not, I'm not gonna have a pterodactyl co-worker or something like that. It's just madness. They would be hunted to extinction. Come on, it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Also, and, and this is, because I, I did see about 10 minutes of uh, Jurassic... Let's go! Guppy me, guppy me. Okay, um... That's still pretty good. I'll still take one of those, I'd suggest. Um, I'll live with that. I can definitely live with that. The uh, it, it, There was another post in the same thread that, that kickstarted it for me. And I was like, I, I remember complaining about that too. In the second movie, the main, you know, bad guys, their whole thing is they like, you know, kidnap dinosaurs or dinosaur nap dinosaurs. Um... And then they like sell them in auctions and stuff like that. So that's already you got to suspend like some degree of disbelief. But the real thing that you have to suspend your disbelief for is that the top bid for dinosaurs in these auctions is like, no, no, thank you, is like $10 million. You know, at the height of insanity, there were like bored apes selling for like a million bucks. And you could get like a real Tyrannosaurus Rex. For, I don't know, $15 million? It's kind of... I mean, it seems like I, I know where I would put my money, personally. Don't get me wrong, you probably got other carrying costs with a T-Rex. Like, you gotta eat a lot of... It's gotta eat a lot of food. You gotta have a, a pen in order to hold it and stuff like that. You gotta have some staff, but... I mean, it is... A, it's a dinosaur, man. They captured the... They captured the, the minds of man. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Like, you could you could either have a T-Rex or you could have one year of Eric Carlson's contract for the San Jose Sharks right now. I mean, honestly, the Sharks would probably be better off having the T-Rex patrol the blue line. Anyway, that's, that's all I got. I'm never going to see them. Jurassic World, it actually, it, it's in an esteemed or an unesteemed collection. Um, movies, ooh, movies that I turned off on an airplane. Technically, it's a, it's an exception because it was actually during a layover at an airport when I turned it off. But if anything, that's that's kind of even worse. And apparently, I, I got to assume Jurassic World is the best of of the three because it's the first. Movies to morb to. Music to morb to. Nope. Look at that. Music not to morb to. That's the truth. That's the damn truth right there. Dominion was so ass. I resent, I, I thought it was bad when the 90s, or sorry, when the 80s were being like nostalgia to hell and like, I, I mean, I guess we're still living in that. When like every two years there's like a new Ghostbusters remake and like, I, I guess Cobra Kai is good. People seem to like Cobra Kai, um, but obviously Stranger Things is still going on and stuff like that and 
you know, I was like, man, when, when are we going to move on to 90s uh, nostalgia? And then I uh, thought about it, and nothing says 90s nostalgia more than, like, the Jurassic World movies. And I've decided I'm, I'm ready for, you know, maybe, like, 2000s nostalgia. I'm ready for them to reboot The Wedding Crashers with Timothy Chalamet and then Finn Wolfhard. I think that would be, uh... No, thank you. There's something to that, but just work with me for a second. Remake of Wild Wild West. Dodgeball 2. Can you imagine? Ima imagine what? The greatest movie of all time? Iron Man remake? Jarvis? I did read that article that was like, here's the, the 25 worst movies of the 2000s. And... Uh, I have to say, I, I agreed with, like, literally every single one. I forget what was first. Oh, no, no, I don't. First is Disaster Movie. Now, admittedly, I don't know if I've seen Disaster Movie, um, but I have seen Epic Movie. Epic Movie is unbelievably bad. It's perhaps... I, 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 I talk about movies I turned off on an airplane... I turned that off while I was doing the dishes, which is like a new level of, of like, this movie is ass. The Happening was up there. A, a horrible movie. Is Epic Movie the one where they have the balls on their chin? No, that's movie 43, which didn't even make the list. Meet the Spartans was also on the list. I remember in, in university, I had a friend... Uh, and he came over one day and he was like, bro, you got to see this. And then he pulled up like his laptop because this is what it was like in 2008, 2007, 2008. He pulled up his laptop, said, do you have an HDMI cord? And then I was like, sure. And then he plugged the HDMI cord from his laptop into the TV, went to YouTube 1.0 and then typed in like... Um, Meet the Spartans montage or something like that and then made me sit there and watch like one of the this is sparta parody scenes from meet the spartans with with carmen electra oh man so he tortured you he's a funny guy like it this is a true story it, it reflects badly on both of us i want to say but one day he was he came over and you know maybe there was some drinks involved but he was flexing for no reason about how he's like the biggest Beatles fan on the planet just like inane shit that like who cares right like even if it was true it wouldn't matter but it's just like it's a lie like I'd never heard him talk about the Beatles before in my entire life um and I said, I bet I can name more Beatles songs than you. And he said, you're on. And then he went first and named the song. Then I went first and named the song. And then he stopped after like three songs. After three songs, he was like, uh, uh, uh. And then it was over. And I was like, what? Like, why are you even trying to... Why are you trying to pretend? You know nobody knows more about the Beatles than me, man. He was like, um, hey Jude, and I was like, mm, Maxwell Silver Hammer, and he was like, uh, 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 um, Eleanor Rigby, and I was like, mm, Helter Skelter, and then he was like, I don't get it, I'm done, man. Oh, this reflects worse on you. Well, that's why, like, it's my favorite type of story. It definitely does not reflect well on me. He did also, <laughs> this is more of like a a sensitive story, but he was having like a, a really bad time at a, at a party we threw once, because he thought, I mean, this is like, I'm going to say it no matter what, but you got to, it was a long time ago, okay? Hold on, Guppy, Guppy. He had a crush on a girl, and then that girl was at our party, and she was talking to another guy, and sh he got very melancholy because he thought that, like, she was giving him more attention than 
she was giving the other guy more attention than she was giving him. But the second order wrinkle to the story is that uh, she was she had a boyfriend who was not either of these two guys, and like they ended up getting married. Like they, she was just friends with like both of these guys. It's just a disaster, right? Anyway. So he came to the party and he got upset because she was the, his crush who was dating somebody else was having a conversation with another guy. And I remember like we couldn't find them for a while. We were like, where's this guy? Where's this guy? And then I went up to my room and the dude was like sitting on my bed in my room, like, you know, crying, which is I do want to say like you got you're young. Alcohol's involved, you know, emotions can run hot, right? Like, it's a little embarrassing but and a little cringe, but it happens. But I, I was trying to comfort him, but the thing that pissed me off is I kept a bunch of food in my room so that my roommates wouldn't eat it. And he had just, like, he had ripped open my bag of Ruffles all-dressed chips and was just eating them on my bed. And I was like... Like, on the one hand, I'm, like, trying to make you feel better. But at the same time, I was like, bro, you ate, like, my my name brand chips on my bed? Come on. Like, he, he had gone complete sicko mode. He just didn't care about anything, man. Dude, I know the crumbs! That's what I'm saying! Anyway, he's okay. I don't know. I haven't talked to him in like 10 years. He's probably fine. It's the most college story I've ever heard. I mean, it sounds really stupid when you tell it back. And it was really stupid at the time, to be fair. I don't care for you. I want to save my money. How many friends did you lose when you went to South Korea? Well, I don't know. It depends. Like, Because I, I would still consider them friends. But at the same time, you know, would I know them if I saw them on the street? Would I recognize them? I don't know. Would I, would I remember their names? Would I, uh, would I uh, look up for my cell phone to wave? I don't know. I don't know, honestly. I'd have to think about it. No, the answer to all three is no. If if I saw some of my friends from college, I would definitely cross the street to say hi. But it is weird because, like, you know, we were we lived in this crucible together, a very non-representative crucible of what real life is like and you know what our real personalities are like. Um, from seventeen to twenty-one or something like that, and then uh, saw each other like three times from that point onwards and now we're in like our early 30s i think it would be very cool to see uh to see my friends from college but i think it would also be very surreal because I, I i would be like hey check it out remember how we played like all that uh edward 40 hands but then we did it instead of just duct taping a 40 to each of our hands we then duct taped each other to the adjacent person's 40 so that you couldn't get your hand back until one of your neighbors had also finished their 40. So there was like a little mutually assured destruction going on. Yeah, well, like, hey, what's new with me? I got a, like a two-year-old child. I am responsible for like a, a tender human life right now. And what's messed up is that it's like I'm I'm handling it, you know? It's not like it this child is in danger. I'm 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 doing a good job. Thought she was 20 months. You don't need to come on, don't debase yourself. She's around too. When another child or a, a, the parent of another child asks me how old my child is, I say 20 months. For you guys, I can say nearly two. No rerolls, dude. This this is this is brutality. I don't want any of this garbage. Who uses months after the first year with WTF? I don't know. Just about every parent on the planet when they're talking to other parents. Trust me. I'm. I'll. I'll do the recon so you don't have to.
I know you spend a lot of time on the image boards. You think you got your your foot on the or your finger on the pulse of the the everyman. Uh, to most people out there, you know, they're just living their lives, man. They're going to the grocery store and going, what the heck? Ground beef so expensive? I'll just take Italian sausage instead. They're making Italian sausage hard tacos. You know how it is. Why not? Is that you? Did you do that? No, but I've been thinking about it. I really, like, I, I wanted to start off today speaking about the grocery store, talking about how I don't think there's a better value in the grocery store than Italian sausage. If you go to the butcher and you say, hey, give me two hot Italian sausage, give me, give me two mild Italian sausage, you're going to get a, a parcel of paper that has a price tag on it, a price tag sticker, and the sticker is going to say something like 420. And I just chose a number arbitrarily out of thin air on that one, okay? It doesn't mean anything. What? Everything else at the grocery store, if you if you get a single strip loin steak, it's getting crazy out there. In Canada, that's like, well, I, I guess in BC, that could cost you 15 bucks right there for a single steak. Now, would I rather have a single steak or, or two sausages? I'd probably rather have a single steak, but I mean, for an every night sort of thing, let me get the, uh, let me get the Italian sausage and not worry so much about like the health concerns because I think it's possible that it might like uh, kill you faster. Obviously, obviously. Plus like Italian sausage, it's got so many options, man. Like you can do so much with it. It, it can go with any type of pasta. You can use it as a, as a topping on a pizza. You could just grill them. You know what? Yeah. And, and put it in a bun. And there you go. You got something for a barbecue. You could just saute it, put it on a plate with some mashed potatoes. Now you got like a little Italian bangers and mash. I don't know if it would be like my first pick, but it's something. Chop it up, put it on a sandwich. Now you got a sausage sandwich. Exactly. You can't see there is egghead down there. I'm not doing it, man. It's a very versatile food. You can make a sausage poutine if you want. Sure, if you're like, you know, binging with Babish, if you're making a YouTube video, you could make your own um, sausage poutine or you could like you know go to costco and get one for 375 or something like that instead of spending like your whole night oh yeah by the way i see a lot of people you must be uh you must be old heads we don't do zane anymore because isaac um betrayed me i uh previously i thought that the only path to true enlightenment in this game was shrugging off the good items and then taking all of like the items that instead lead to some variance in terms of quality in order to lead to some hilarity. Then, they stopped uh, placing good items in the game. They got rid of the damage upgrades, the tiers upgrades, and the HP upgrades. And uh, every time I try to do a zany run, it's like, oh, imagine how zany it would be if your tears did no damage at all and also your tear rate was really low and you had no hp and blah anyway so now i just um i take items that are good and i ignore the items that are bad and i mean we've been cruising since then it's funny ever since i started playing isaac like the people who play well um, I've gotten a lot less comments about how, hey, NL's like, he's really funny. He's, every, anytime the Isaac subreddit talks about me, 
Sometimes I don't need to watch perfect Isaac play. That's when I go and I watch NL. Just because he's got a certain unique banter quality. He's probably the worst player of the game I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, he doesn't even know that RoboBaby 2.0 uh, plus rubber cement gives you a RoboBaby 2.0 laser beam that can bounce off the wall. And if then that passes through multi-dimensional baby, it can get a 1.5x damage bonus. I mean, who doesn't know uh, this insane synergy that's happened two times in the real world um but i do i think it's cute how he can just keep his mouth moving like a mile a minute and sometimes i use that uh i need that because it is a good distraction for me from remembering that i have to give a five minute speech in seventh grade public speaking tomorrow which i'm really nervous about now that i started playing the game uh like the people who do well Mostly is just a lot of people complaining about how, uh, like, I'm so good at the game that it's boring now. And I gotta tell you, it feels damn good. It feels damn good. I can't, af I can't afford the guppy item. I can't afford the guppy item. Just do a team melt run? Team melt is actually ass. Is actually, wait, is, uh, no, I'm thinking of TM Trainer, sorry. TM Trainer has to be the biggest betrayal in the whole game. Team Melt is very similar now that I think about it. What is, T no, isn't Team Melt based on TM Trainer? I can't remember. They needed a Zane consultant when they added some of these items. I will say, the only thing I disagree with on the, the list of worst movies of the 2000s, they had Norbit at number five. Which I really feel... Like, Norbit is, is a horrendous movie, okay? It has... very few redeeming elements. But... it does have turkey ass. Which is an insanely good joke. Don't worry, Norbit. We saved the best part for you. Oh, really? What part's that? Turkey ass! Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, hi, Tomo. You want to leave, buddy? Okay, let me finish this room, then I'll get you out of here. I don't think Norbit is the fifth worst movie of the 2000s. I don't even think it should be in the top 25 or the bottom 25. Like, 25th worst was Transformers 2. That's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Okay, Tomo. Transformers 2 is not watchable. You're confusing watchable with you being like nine when it came out. Transformers 2 is much like Norbit. It has one good joke. Oh yeah, they went out to find you a tighter shirt. They don't have tighter shirts. We checked. But that is not even in the same ballpark on the level of humor quality as Turkey Ass. Jack and Jill was actually not on the list. Um, the Adam Sandler representation was, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Which I've never seen, but apparently Rob Schneider is in the movie for like 25 minutes doing an incredibly racist impression of an Asian wedding officiator. Officiant? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Hold on, let's think about this. You, you, this is a maybe. Maybe we need it. This is a gimme. These two are re-roll me's. We can re-roll them again. I'm not sweating it. Shot speed down. Rob Schneider is Asian, though? Yeah, but I think even being Asian, you could do a racist caricature. Like, if he was just talking like he normally speaks, then I wouldn't be like, oh, that's so racist. But based on what I've seen from the film, in, in clips, uh, I think he, he kind of lays it on a little thick. 
Only three more doubters. We're actually like so fine. You don't even know we have succubus. How how do we lose? We just start playing normally. Once we're down to one life, and then we got nothing to worry about. Look at that. We got Bob's rod in the head. What are you crying about? Was it better or worse than the rock song? I, that rock song is really... Is really bad. But that was also... I mean, it's the early 2000s, man. Things were different back then. What what rock song? Okay, well, The Rock did, like, an album. Well, he, he did a song on a WWE album, right? From the early 2000s, where he talks about... Going to this lady's house, and she cooked him some food so good that he has sexual intercourse with her. And... He's obviously so skilled at that, that it's got her... Let's just say it has her speaking in tongues. I can't believe I didn't get hit. He's that good? A apparently he's that good, who knew? Oh, you piece of crap. What a shot. Two more? You don't even know you, how, like, done you are. You actually have no idea. Is it we already won and it's already over for you? If you can't win this run, honestly, you're not welcome to be on the Binding of Isaac subreddit anymore. This should be a gimme. The hell is Lost Fly? Comedic timing? You know, I, I can't be mad. I guess if I was a doubter, I would tell myself comforting lies as well. I war chested all my points on Daniel making it to phase two of Melania on a single run today, so I. I understand. I understand what it's like. Wow, that is such a hard boss fight. Holy cow. I don't know. I don't know if we can make this one work. Oh, I didn't know you were going to be a coward. Go ahead, say it. Go ahead. See if I care. Who? All that disrespect for Lost Fly, and he ended up getting the last hit. Holy cow. Slash marker. It's the first Isaac. That's Isaac 1. We're warmed up. I'm stunned we didn't get Gubbin.